Hey guys, it's Caitlin from Canine, and I'm going to be talking about all of the basics of the e-collar. So for this first video, the goal is for me to just go through exactly what I do when I open up the box, what the buttons are, what settings we put it at, and everything like that. And then as I continue to share more of these segments, if you will, I will be doing more how-to of doing it on the dog. So. How I think about videos when I watch them from a standpoint of if I'm typing in something in YouTube and I need help figuring out how do I change a tire? How do I set up this new microphone thing that makes me look like a dork? I want it to feel as if someone's talking to me like we're just sitting in my front living room, we're having a cup of coffee and we're chit chatting. Um, I don't do well with a, all right, so let's bring out the owner's manual and let's look at one through 17 steps and let's go through that together as a team. I'm much more of like, okay, here's how I do it. If this works for you, great. If it doesn't, no big deal. So that's kind of my take on how I'm going to be um, presenting these videos is I hope you feel like you're sitting in this front room with me, slippers and socks on, uh, and feel comfortable um, as you are getting your e-collar set up for your dog. So we exclusively use e-collar technologies. Um, there are a lot of really awesome other brands out there. Uh, we just like to keep it, and I say we as if like there's a huge team, but me, Amber, and Casey <laughs> like to keep it very consistent across the board for all of our clients. And then there are definitely different um, sizes and different units that we might need to utilize for different dogs. For instance, we have the micro who would, the type of dogs that would be using that is more of like your super small dogs or maybe maybe even a super sensitive dog. Um, majority of our dogs go home on the mini educator, which is kind of the standard. Um, and then we also have some dogs that go home on the boss. And that's um, one of your higher, um, kind of your big dog unit, if you will. So let's go over what we do when we open up this beautiful box. So when you get your e-collar, you're going to get a remote and a receiver. The receiver is the portion that goes on the dog. Um, the remote is obviously the buttons that you press to communicate with the dog. And then there's a charger, a strap in here, different um, contact points, everything like that. So say we're just gonna start this dog up on the standard one, the short contact points. Um, that's what comes on every single one. There are definitely different options of contact points. So if you have a dog that's Oh my gosh, I'm already dropping stuff. Um, if you have a dog that has like really long hair, they've got the winged contact points, it works beautifully um, for getting through those thick coats. But let's talk about how we turn this on, how we set it up and get it ready to go onto the dog. So there's a big button on the back. It has an L on it. To turn on this portion of the remote, all you do is you hold that in until the screen turns blue. That does not mean that this portion of the e-collar is on. There's a little red dot here and a little red dot on the receiver. All you do is you touch those together until that green light comes on. Now, how do we know this is synced? So I always tell my owners, you don't have an e-collar if A, you don't have contact, or B, they're not synced. So right now this is set up on vibrate, but I can still press the vibrate button, which is the T, to see if they're synced. This is vibrating, the lights are both going, they're synced, we're good to go. So it comes standard set up as an M and a C. The M stands for momentary. That's if I press this black button, it's only going to give the dog just the slightest tap. I should probably show you that. Oh, it would help if I didn't have it on zero. Hello. And I'm not going to edit that out, by the way. Okay, so we're going to put it on a four. So see how it just blinks so quickly? I'm still holding in the button. So you're just getting that tiny little dip. Um, and then the red button currently is set up on C, which means continuous. So if I hold that in, it's, the dog's gonna feel it until I release it or until this times out. So I'm gonna hold that in until you see that it times out, um, which should be here shortly. There, I'm still holding it in, but it timed out. That's just probably a safety um, kind of standard thing that they have set up. If you were to sit on it, you're not gonna sit there stimming your dog. 
I like to set up the remotes so that they're completely on continuous. So how we do that is this little button next to the big L button. You're gonna hold that in until we get it to C. So it's currently on M, hold it in. There we go, we're on C. So now how my remote is set up is the black S button, which I tell my clients that we're using 90, 95% of the time is whatever numbers on that screen. And you can control if you just wanna tap, if you wanna tap, tap, if you wanna continuous, if you need a little bit of like two second hold release, or if you need a 10 second hold, whatever that may be, that black S button is how you control that. The red, red S button is what we consider the boost. So it comes with a standard, so say we're at a number five. Um, the red boost comes at a standard five. So it'll jump no matter what number you're at. So I'm gonna go to a 10. It'll still only jump by five. We change that number for each dog. So you might have some dogs that go home with it at five. There might be some that go home with the boost set at 15. That's a really nice uh, feature for when you kind of get, we call it the oh shit button uh, here, but or you can say uh-oh button. And that's gonna be if, say we're out on a walk and you're walking your reactive dog and you know you're gonna need to dial up for that initial tap at arousal, the boost button is really nice. So you're staying down in your lower register, but you do need a quick higher up number. That red button is set up for our clients so that they feel that they can have a really nice timely um, correction for their dog when they're out addressing any arousal issues and things like that. Or maybe it's when they see a squirrel and they're like, oh, I really, really, really want to beeline after it. That button is really nice to help the dog when they're in a much heightened state of mind. So we have ours always set up and continuous. And then um, another thing that we change right away is the vibrate button to the tone. So you can just have it like this. All you do to change it to the tone is you're gonna press the big L button on the back and the T button simultaneously. So I'm gonna press the L button first and then press the T button like so. Okay, what I had to do there and I thought I was already at zero is I had to put it down to zero. So. Um, if you were like, do I really have to press it that many times? Nope, I just thought it was at zero and it was at four. So I can do that again, I'm gonna put it on two. So now it's on vibrate, because I just changed it back. Now I'm gonna change it back to tone. Again, I'm pressing this button and then the T button simultaneously. Now, we've got the tone function, okay? So that T button stands for tone, but it comes on vibrate. So if you wanna utilize the tone, um, switch that over right away. So technically this is ready and set up to go on to one of our dogs because we don't know yet what boost number we would need to um, set it at or anything like that. So this is just our standard setup of exactly how we like to utilize the e-collar for our training dogs. So a couple of features um, for you to just be aware of. Up here is the dial, obviously. It goes anywhere from one to 100 and the 100 is high is what it's considered. Another thing that this has a feature of is say you're at a 15 and you wanna lock it in at the 15. You push this down and it locks it. So now if you try dialing, it's not changing the number. I never lock it. Um, sometimes that'll happen and my owners will contact me and be like, oh my gosh, uh-oh, my screen's broken, it's locked at the same number. Try just pressing it in and unlocking it and then you've got your dial again, okay? Um, the dial is pretty sensitive, so make sure to just get really comfortable with it. Um, we do a lot of dialing up. I have a reel on showing you how we dial up and tap at the same time. We just get really good with our pointer finger and our thumb of dialing, being able to tap when we need to, and everything like that. Um, a really cool feature is if you press the big L button on the back once, you get a strobing light on the receiver. 
We don't ever really use the strobe, but if you press it a second time, it's a nice solid flashlight. This is awesome for when you're outside with your dog, especially if they're off leash and it's dark out. You can always see them. Um, it's great for potty breaks and everything like that, especially during the winter time. And then you press it one more time and it turns it off, okay? So I always try to tell my owners is keep it very simple when it comes to the e-collar, especially once the dog goes home, they're already trained on it. So, you know, they're using the black S button 95% of the time, the boost button, their uh-oh button when they need it, and the tone they're using all of the time for recall. So that's, the dogs hear that nice sound and they head to their owner. Um, there is a charging port on each component right there. And we just tell our owners to plug it in every evening. So at the end of the day, dog goes into the kennel to sleep um, and plug it in and it's ready to go for the next day. Um, E-Collar Technologies has a really nice array of different band types. This one's the bungee. Um, I really like to utilize that on my dogs that have really big necks, a lot of bully breeds. Um, it's really nice to confirm that you're gonna get really good contact across the board. I don't use it with my little breeds as much just because I don't find that I get good contact then. Um, I also use Canine Tactical Gears e-collar holder. That one's really cool looking. So there's a lot of different options for straps. Um, if your dog has allergy issues, there's hypoallergenic types. Um, so you can get pretty creative with the look of it and the functionality and everything like that. So that is the main way that we set up our e-collar very straightforward always on continuous mode we always use the tone for recall um, and then we use the red button as a boost and just plan on that dependent on each of the dogs and that can go anywhere from 5 to 60 is what you can set the um, boost to so that is your what does canine do the second they open up their e-collar box? How do they set it up? What does each button mean? That is your sitting in Kate's front living room uh, rundown of all things e-collar right away coming out of the box. And again, there are owner manuals in here, tons of other videos, how to's, things like that. Um, but this is just comes out of the box. This is how we set it up and then we get to work on it. So I hope that helps and feel free to let me know if you guys have any questions and happy training.